Yeah, welcome to my new video. This video will have only audio, so you can keep your browser in background, listen to me and continue working on your things. In this video I will compare OpenGL versus OpenGL ES 2.0 and the new Vulkan API. OpenGL is the old is the oldest one. It yeah was released 1992, so it's really old. Then OpenGL ES 2.0 is some kind of newer and also the basis of the WebGL standard. And Vulkan was just released uh, this month, so in March 2016. Um, let's compare these graphics APIs and also look at the development of hardware and how they fit these requirements. Yeah. Um, OpenGL, really old, um, hardly relies on state. So state is everywhere and you have in OpenGL this immediate mode. This means for every vertex you want to put into a triangle you will do a function call. So for a triangle you need at least three function calls. If you want to have a colored triangle you have six function calls. So for every vertex and every triangle you call the API that there is a vertex at this in this position. This has uh, yeah this is one of the major flaws of the OpenGL API. You have a lot of state. You have uh, you have the state which texture is bound, you have the state which shader is bound, you have the state which render buffer you actually are, which render target you actually have, the, the which vertex, vertex attributes are bound, uh, yeah, a lot of state. Um, one of the major, yeah, the immediate mode is not really helpful. There were some extensions in the OpenGL 1.1 standard, which um, had some additional vertex arrays. So you, instead of for a million vertices calling uh, two to three million times the API, you can just upload some megabytes of data and tell the API that this is your vertex data. Yeah. Um, also typical for OpenGL is the fixed attributes and the uniform, the fixed uniform. So every, uh, so you, the fixed function pipeline, especially, you have uh, every vertex has a vertex position, a color, a texture, a coordinate, and the normal. And yeah, you with every. With every uh, vertex, you have this whole data, this bunch of data, even if you don't need it. Also, with uniforms, you always have this uh, model view projection matrix that you, yeah, that you have to track every time. So the 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 OpenGL ES API is a subset of the OpenGL API. Um, or to be more precise, is it is a kind of cherry picking out of the current OpenGL standard. So OpenGL ES 2.0 um, is written against the OpenGL 2 standard. So this means this fixed function pipeline was completely dropped. So no attributes. You have no more fixed uh, attributes. You can completely. Uh, decide whether you want to upload vertex attributes or if you want to compute them in the shader. You can completely, yeah, you, you, it only ba is based on shaders, the complete fixed function pipeline is dropped. You have to write, uh, on the downside this means you have to f write uh, the transformation each time, so the the viewport and the object transformation each time. 
but I think this doesn't hurt really if you write a game engine. And yeah, then there's a big jump towards the Vulkan API, the latest uh, API for graphics cards, and this is completely stateless. So when we look at the hardware architecture of GPUs, we see GPUs are uh, yeah just a kind of silicon and they have like a CPU, they have registers and you write to these registers uh, uh, some values and then the GPU does something and uh, draws something into some memory uh, uh, video RAM and so when the GPU is um, hardware uh, is based on state on registers on the hardware side and the API is also state based why isn't it the optimal way to do so why is it not optimal to use a stateful API against a stateful uh, yeah, computing chip the, um, the problem is the operating system. The operating system has to handle multiple applications that use the same graphics card. So each program has, or at least uh, a, a majority of the programs uh, that have a graphics user interface also use the graphics card. Uh, at least when they draw their, their window border and their compositing. So you have a lot of context changes and every time you change the context on a GPU you have to completely re-upload the state. So what the graphics drivers implement is a kind of state tracker that turns your stateful uh, commands into a state so they can, so uh, when you have the complete state you can do stateless calls and then uploads the whole state to the GPU um, and this is really overhead as you can see so yeah the idea of the uh, Vulkan API was really to to make everything stateless and on the same time reduce the amount of state needed. So in OpenGL you have a lot of state. You have the bound virtuous attributes, you have the uniforms, you have the render targets, you have the immediate uh, values like uh, the colors that don't change and so on. And on with the Vulkan API you have uh, also like up to 10 state variables but only 10 and not 20 or 50 or 120 uh, when you look at the OpenGL driver like from Visa. Um, so Vulkan was, com is, uh, was designed completely stateless and it introduced a new concept that already is there in GPU hardware for, for years these are command lists. Um, in OpenGL command lists are inefficient because you don't know which state uh, is not changing so you cannot just uh, add, uh, create command lists in OpenGL. Um, Vulkan statelessness is really the basis for having command lists and these command lists have some advantages you can so so a command list is a list of commands you execute on a gpu so you uh, a command list is bound to a render target and then you say yeah draw these and these uh, primitives with these and these vertex attributes and these and these uh, uniforms and uh, that's really nice because um, yeah the GPUs are designed to execute command lists and when you have multiple GPUs um, you can do lots of interesting things like 
when you have two different render targets, like one shadow texture. So, so for instance, you draw the one once you draw into the light uh, from from the view of light, and once you draw the whole scene in the view of your scene, um, the one uh, one GPU can do the one scene and. The other GPU can do the other scene because there is no uh, correlation, no data dependencies. You can do things like a 3D uh, view, like so. So you have one image for each eye, and you can, uh, these two GPUs can do it in parallel. But you can can also upload. Uh, the driver, the Vul Vulkan driver, can also upload one command list to do to two GPUs and one GPU can draw the upper and the other can draw the lower part of this render target so you have lots of more parallelization uh, yeah possibilities or at least the driver has and also this yeah the statelessness reduces a lot the overhead for the straight state trackers because you don't need state trackers anymore. So as a conclusion, OpenGL is really old. Even if you write um, software in OpenGL, you should reduce uh, the functions you use to those that are specified also in OpenGL. Yes, that's yeah, that's really nice because you can when you once write your uh, your things your code against the OpenGL ES 2.0 specification your code will also run on an OpenGL driver um, Vulkan is the novel API and I think Vulkan will really bring huge speed ups uh, of games and will make parallelization much more easy for the drivers to do and it's just the modern API design um, as you see Intel supports Vulkan on Linux since the day it, uh, the specification was officially released I hope uh, Vulkan will soon uh, also come into the Misa drivers as a state tracker <laughs> the, yeah, that you can do really efficient Linux gaming. Uh, one problem with driver development really was that AMD had their proprietary Windows driver and the OpenGL or DirectX uh, interface were so inefficient they had to do a lot of tweaks and optimizations um, for the single games that in the end, uh, yeah, they had a hundred. They have in the moment a hundred developers just to optimize their drivers for special games. And with Vulkan API, I think lots of these uh, developers will, will get un uh, unemployed just because Vulkan does not need to be so much optimized because it's it has a kind of better design so in conclusion let's hope that Vulkan gets good driver support also from AMD and Nvidia soon and I think this will be if this works it will be the breakthrough for 3d video gaming on Linux when you are on embedded systems like Android or um, Raspberry Pi or if you write WebGL code then you have to stick with the GLES API um, but it's not that bad as I described you, c you still can work well with it so that's it for today thanks and bye bye